It's Wrestling Wednesday, and we're going to be recreating one of my favorite matches from the early 2000s. Kenta versus Swa from the Noah Wrestling promotion. And we're going to be doing that on Fire Pro Wrestling Returns. Well, greetings, everyone. This is Fire Pro Wrestling Returns, which is a Japanese wrestling game that did have a, a, a European release and limited uh, release on PSN in America. And um, it's one of those wrestling games that, at first glance, you look at it and go, "Oh no, no, no! This is from this is from 1997. These graphics are um, way, way out of date. This is 2D. This isn't something I want to be playing." But actually, the gameplay depth here is incredible. So if you're looking at it and thinking, "Oh my goodness, the graphics look like they suck." Well, okay, fine. Yes, the graphics um, aren't, um, aren't amazing, but I, th I think this is more a distinctive style. This game isn't trying to be a 3D game. If you want that, you want to play your Smackdowns, your King of Coliseums, your All-Star Pro Wrestlings, all that kind of stuff. This isn't trying to be a 3D wrestling game. It's trying to be a 2D wrestling game, and it's, it is it kind of um, enjoying its kind of cartoony um, outline style, but the gameplay here is fun, furious, and because it's 2D, that actually means that frees up a whole bunch of computers computer power um, or, or processor power to have multi-man matches that you wouldn't normally be able to be able to get in a wrestling game. So for example, the eight-man tags, which you just can't do in SmackDown and King of Coliseum and stuff like that, you can do here. The huge multi-man rumbles, um, and I don't mean that, you know, just like six men in the ring, but you know, more like kind of eight, nine, ten men in the ring, you can do that here. Now the matches we're going to be playing here is Kenta versus Swur, and you can see them going right at it. This was actually a match for the Noah Light Heavyweight Championship um, from the early 2000s, and it was an absolutely brilliant match. Classic face versus heel action, um, and I must admit, I don't think Sua ever really reached this height again, because he actually retired. Um, I think a year or so after this match, but he healed it up something brilliant in this match, taking every single shortcut he possibly could, even getting himself disqualified um, at one point as Kenta rolls up the power bomb into a no, and uh, Sua kicks out. Sua playing obviously in the junior heavyweight uh, leagues. He's one of the more muscly kind of stocky guys. Kenta is the more strike-based, um, quick. Uh, cruiser, but it made for a very entertaining match as uh, Sua dominated um, with his high power um, uh, offense and Kenta kept on rally back with his kind of strikes and things like that. And as I mentioned in the other of today's Wrestling Wednesday videos, um, a lot of the of Danny Bryan's offense and CM Punk offense can originally be found um, from Kenta, so we all owe him a, a little bit of a debt. And of course, he's still wrestling over in, in Noah. In fact, he has been recently progressed from the Light Heavyweight Championship to the World Heavyweight Championship. He's currently the GHC um, Championship. Now, to the gameplay of Fire Pro Wrestling, it's similar to Killing of Coliseum in that it's timing based. Um, you'll note that when we have a grapple, uh, will lock up and then there'll be this kind of split second of pause and in that split second the first person to press the command for the move they want to do uh, will attempt it and most of the time you will hit your move but there's also lots of kind of math maths going on behind the scenes that control whether a move will hit so for example there um, Sua Wash you Sua won the grapple and hit the suplex but because of momentum and uh, just random chance to an extent um, he was, I was able to counter it unfortunately though he's just hit his um, jumping pedigree variation and Kenta just kicks out on the count of two, so we're definitely being um, the dominant player here and hitting a lariat to go with that as well and a swift tilt to world backbreaker. This also was one of the first games to offer um, customizable ring aprons before the Smackdown games did and it has a management mode to an extent although it's a pay-per-view mode you kind of run a, uh, a single pay-per-view and it kind of shows you that uh, your goal is to put on as entertaining a match as possible as uh, Kenta hits an awesome kick combination but Sua says no scoops him up and hits a fireman's flapjack pancake variation maneuver. Um, and Swa picks him up again to the electric chair drop and has got to be heading towards the three count here. And he's got him up for the ped jumping pedigree again, but this time Kenta manages to counter, scoops him up, misses with the first kick and connects with the second. If there has to be one complaint about the 2 ness of it, if, if, if you don't mind the graphics, it's that sometimes the... Um, 
the stripes are quite hard to connect with. He bounces off the ropes, and there's the Busaku knee that we discussed um, in the other video today. Uh, General Bryan's new finisher. Uh, he connects with it, but Sua is not um, done yet. Now, one of the big differences, perhaps, between Japanese wrestling and uh, American wrestling, in that Japanese wrestling finishes are often used to finish matches, but not not always. And often, if you do get a finisher kind of midway through the match, um, that won't be the end. It can be part of wearing each other down. And you, you can get sometimes a case where someone will hit the finisher, um, they'll kick out, and then they'll kind of add on just one extra move, a lariat or a kick. Um, and that will be enough to finally get the pinfall. So it's a slightly different wrestling style. So in this game, you'll you'll often get finishes like the Busaku knee or the German pedigree during the match, and that won't necessarily um, signify the end. Although Sua is definitely calling for the end now, and he scoops me up for another um, fireman's carry. Flapjack Kenta has really got to be hurting now, but Sua is neglecting to breathe. And as he gets lifted up the go to slip, we get a critical. That is game over. Another feature of the Prior Pro Wrestling series is instant knockouts. They're random chance, but only done from certain manoeuvres. You won't get them in every match, you wouldn't even get them every day or every week, but they will happen for occasion. I just, just sometimes one person can't take any more, or maybe a bone will snap, or maybe we'll just knock them clean out. But in this particular case, Kenta, after being beaten up and beaten up and beaten up, was able to hit his go to sleep, and that was the end of Sua. And also Sua neglected to breathe as well. You actually have a button which is, um, it's like the, the stamina button a little bit in um, in the SmackDown games where you actually have to make your player kind of sit there and catch his breath. And you can see actually during the end of that match, Sua was breathing heavier and heavier and heavier. He was hitting move after move, but he wasn't actually um, giving, his, giving his character time to recuperate. And once I hit the go to sleep, that was it for him. If you've enjoyed this, uh, please do give the video a like and uh, do subscribe for the for wrestling videos every Wednesday. Uh, if you've got any experiences of the Fire Pro games, then do let me know in the comment section, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.